We're just one video away from the completion of the Boolean Gemini project. There goes my, my magnetic clip. Magazine. It's a magazine. <laughs> Greetings fellow makers! Welcome to Prop3D, your look into the world of 3D printing for prop and costume making. I'm Bill, and today I started painting the Boolean Gemini Scout Rifle. Quick side note, a lot of you guys were curious how much this guy weighs. Now, this is all printed in the Matter Hackers Pro PLA plastic, and I think it was about 20% infill on most of the pieces. That brings the weight to just over two pounds, which is actually quite nice and comfortable. Now, even though at the end of the last video, I said that this was ready for paint, all of these pieces are primed and ready to go for paint. I decided that it needed just a little bit more love. So I went over everything again with some wet sanding. That was a 400 grit sandpaper, a little bit of water, and I sanded it down all nice and smooth. And then I primed it again. And then, then it was totally ready for paint. All of the paints that I used for my base colors were a Tamiya acrylic paint that I thinned down a little bit with some rubbing alcohol. The paint was thinned so that I could run it through my airbrush. I started by covering all of the parts in a gunmetal color. I imagine that most of the gun parts were supposed to be made out of a metal, so having that as the first base color made sense. Once everything was all shiny and metallic, I moved on to some masking. Using the in-game reference images as a guide, I started masking off small areas of the gun that would look like the paint had chipped off down to the bare metal. I used a latex masking fluid for this, but you could use toothpaste, mustard, or a variety of other condiments. I brushed the latex onto edges and any areas that would get a lot of wear and tear. This liquid dries to a rubbery consistency that temporarily sticks to the surface. Next, I started using masking tape to cordon off the other areas of color. The top part of the gun was masked off and then I painted it white again with my airbrush. It took a couple of passes to make sure that white paint covered the metallic paint below it. Once that was all dry, I could peel away the masking tape, showing a nice divide between the metal and white colors. I could also peel away the latex masking rubber. This is where it gets really fun. I just used my finger to pull most of it away, and then I took care of any loose paint chips with an old toothbrush. This looks really cool. It's one of my favorite techniques for weathering a paint job. I did the same masking and spraying in white for the handled parts of the gun. Again, spraying it on, letting it dry, and then peeling away the masking to see the super awesome paint job. The top rear part of the gun is mostly orange, so I masked that off from the white and mixed up my own batch of orange paint. I mixed in some yellow and tan with the orange to gut the color that I wanted according to the reference images. This color was also airbrushed onto the gun parts. It also took a couple of passes to get full coverage. Tell you what though, it looks really nice next to that white that I painted earlier. Much of the gun is a darker metallic color, so I mixed up some black paint in with my gunmetal paint to take it to the next level. Parts were masked off again to keep some of the gun that lighter metallic color and then I airbrushed the darker color on. This contrast really helps add some visual interest to the prop. After a lot more masking, I sprayed more of that dark metallic color onto nearly every handle surface and the barrel of the gun. As the layers of paint started to dry, I could mask off and add more intricate details. Some of the indents on the upper part of the gun needed a dark background, so they are masked off with tape and then airbrushed. Masking sure is a lot of tedious work, but it's hard to argue with how easy it is to just spray on a color and get really amazing results. In contrast, some of the smaller areas I went in with just a paintbrush to add the color. You really have to decide for yourself if it's worth the time you spend masking versus the time you'll spend brushing and the results that you'll get. In this case, I ended up masking these parts and going over them again with the airbrush because I wasn't happy with the brush strokes that I was getting. Now, at this point, I noticed that the masking tape was pulling some of that darker paint up. So I figured it was time to seal the paint job. I used a clear lacquer in the airbrush to seal and protect everything I had painted so far. Lacquer dries really fast, which is nice because I'm incredibly impatient. The last part to get its base color was the foregrip, which is a lovely shade of blue. After mixing up a big batch of paint to my liking, I masked off that entire area and hit it all with a couple good layers that wonderful blue. And that is where we stand now with just a couple more bits of painting to do to finish this piece up. I am chomping at the bit to get this thing painted and finished up. In fact, as soon as I'm done recording and editing this video, I'm probably gonna go finish this. 
I do hope you guys are enjoying this build as we come to the close. And I also hope that you learned a couple things maybe about masking and painting today. Those techniques are super fun and incredibly useful. They can be applied to any of your 3D printed prop or costume making projects. Hey gang, thanks for checking in on the progress and watching this video. We have just one more in this series before this fella is all done. Up next, the rest of the detail painting on here and the weathering. Hey, if you're new to the channel, you're just finding us right now, then you wanna go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Not only do we have a bunch of prop and costume making videos coming out with some more traditional techniques, but we have more 3D printing coming at you, especially the conclusion of this build. Also head on back and check out some of our older videos, especially some of the earlier ones in this build to see how it all gets started. If you have any questions about this particular project here, feel free to leave those down in the comments. I try to get back to as many of those as I can. Thanks again for watching and I will see you all in the next final video of the Boolean Gemini series.